Hi there, welcome to this devotion. Have you ever sat down and thought about how you define ownership of anything, like your house? Now in South Africa, it's, it's, it's quite a sore topic because there are land claims on farms that people are pretty sure about their ownership. There are other provinces where farmers own land where they found coal. And the farmers have found out they don't have the mining rights to that coal. I mean, coming back to our house, when someone flies a drone over my house, I mean, at what level am I allowed to start throwing stones at it? I mean, you can't just bring a drone at a low level of my property. In the old days, they defined your property as the land and the footprint of the land all the way up into the heaven and all the way down into the darkest earth. That's how land ownership was defined. And nowadays it's different. When I get in an aeroplane and fly anywhere, the aeroplane doesn't zigzag between property owners who haven't given permission to, to fly over their land. So, so it's a little bit more tricky than what it used to be. For me, to even try and explain ownership to a two and a half year old is tricky. My mother and Phyllis went the other day with him to a coffee shop in a garden environment and they had these toys scattered over the garden for the kids to play with. Well, my little grandson rounded up all those toys and brought it onto the table. And they had quite a dilemma explaining to him that it's not his. Me, I take the shortcut. When I walk with him in town and in toy shops, I just say, don't touch. And he understands what I mean. When he's a bit later, I'll, I'll try and define ownership to him. But it is tricky. Um, these two law professors wrote a book on ownership. And the title of the book is Mine. Mine. And, and the book covers these hidden rules that control our lives about ownership of things. Ownership and rules of ownership and wars about ownership of things you and I, we don't even know about. But they, they propose that, that these, this ownership is defined into these six comp compelling stories. The first one being possession. You know, like in a playground when a baby grabs something and says, it's mine. That, that is one, possession. The second story of, of ownership is first owned. You know, first ownership, first come, first serve. Whoever owned it first owns it. Then the third, the third point is labor. I worked for it, I paid for it, so it's mine. And that defines ownership. The, the next one is attachment. You know, the sky above my property and, and, and whatever is attached to mine is by definition owned by me too. Self-ownership, it's mine because it comes from my body, my words, um, mine because it comes from me. And the last one is family ownership. You know, I'm part of a family, so I'm entitled to certain rights for that family. And over, ownership over the millennia have been argued with these six points or these six basic points. There's this ancient song that, that goes like this, listen to this. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. Ha has, it, has it ever occurred to you that you were created and, and the creator has a claim of ownership on you? Mary sold paintings in our church the other day. And, and no matter who buys them, these beautiful paintings has her name on it. We'll always associate her as the creator of those paintings. But the same goes for you and I. Our creator's name is on us. In fact, our Lord Jesus came on earth to reclaim our lives. Listen, listen to those, those six stories, those six arguments I spoke about earlier, but, but from, a, from a point of view of Jesus. Possession. Possession. I have it. It's mine. Jesus paved the way for us to submit ownership of our lives to God. Our Creator owns you and I, but only once we submit and concede to that ownership through a relationship. And the second point was first ownership. Our Creator, God, Jesus, Spirit, owned you and I first. 
while we were being created in our mother's womb. Labor, I paid for it, it's mine. We are created by God for God. And there is purpose in our life. And, and Jesus came and paid again for the lives that God created. My next point was attachment. God's, God's spirit is in you and I. We, we learn about that. And because of that relationship of God in us, we are attached to God. And so our ownership is God. You and I are attached to God. Self-ownership, you know, things that come off my body are own. Jesus sacrificed his body so that we, you and I, could come together with our, our Creator in a relationship and, and concede ownership back to our Creator. Family ownership. You are, you and I, we are invited into the family of God. We are invited to be a family member, a child, a, a, a son, a daughter of God. You're in South Africa. The beaches are not for sale. No private person can fence off a beach and claim ownership. And that's why I'm standing here today. Because I hope that the same goes for you and I. Our Creator can claim ownership. So please, do me a favor. Don't submit to any other power. Don't give the ownership of your life to anyone other than your and my Creator. Because only God can lay a claim of ownership on your life. God loves you and wants you to feel that love, wants you to grow in that love. So until we meet again, God bless.